Hello. In a previous video, we walked through some overviews of some terminology associated with convertible bonds. In this video, we're going to go through an example and do some calculations. So we have a hypothetical company here. We're going to call it Gorilla Grub Restaurants. And it pays a 3.25% coupon and matures in 2044. So just a little side note, that 3.25% just tells us the coupon and the 2044 tells us the conversion year. That bond is currently trading for $1,670 per 1,000 par value bond. So this 3.25% coupon bond matures in approximately 24 years. It's 2020 as I'm recording this. Let's assume that other similar risk bonds have a 4% yield. So note that this bond is actually paying a slightly lower coupon rate than what we would expect on other similar risk bonds. It's going to be pretty common for convertible bonds because bondholders get the upside of that convertible feature and therefore they're going to be willing to take a little bit less for the actual bond itself. Current stock price is $33.50. And the conversion price is $22.22. .22. So again, that conversion price is telling us that's like the strike price. If we decided to convert, we'd be effectively buying those shares for $22.22. .22. Since the current stock price is higher than that, then the conversion value is going to exceed $1,000. This convertible bond is effectively in the money and that means it has a val valuable conversion feature associated with it. So we now want to calculate the conversion ratio, conversion value, pure bond value, conversion premium, and downside risk. So let's go ahead and start with uh, conversion ratio. Conversion ratio. Is just equal to $1,000 divided by the conversion price. And that conversion price was $22.22. So let me grab my calculator real quick. $1,000 divided by 22.22 gives us a conversion ratio of 45 shares. So what this tells me is that each of these bonds is convertible into 45 shares of the underlying stock. Next up, I'm gonna calculate the conversion value. How much is this bond worth purely based on the number of shares that I can convert it into? So the bond has a conversion ratio of 45 shares and the conversion or the current stock price is $33.50. So that gives me a conversion value of 45 times 33.50 of $1,507.50. Now note, the actual bond is trading for more than that. And that's because the bond has lots of time before it matures. So the stock price could keep going up if I wait it. It's like a call option. The longer I have till maturity, the more the option is gonna be worth. And so this difference between the bond price and the conversion value kind of captures that speculative premium associated with the call options. So next I want the pure bond value. Now this is saying kind of worst case scenario, what could happen? Well, what if the stock plummeted and all of a sudden the stock is trading for $5 a share? Now it would have to climb all the way back up to 22, 22 for me to exercise it. At this point, investors are gonna be saying, you know what, probably best to just value it as a bond instead of the underlying stock. So if I did that, our normal assumption is that bonds pay semi-annual coupon rates, so I'm gonna set my pure bond value to two periods per year. The bond has 24 years remaining until maturity, so that's gonna give me 48 semi-annual periods. If this were just a regular bond, based on the riskiness of the company, 
their financial risk. How likely are they to repay the coupon payments in par value? Investors would need a 4% rate of return. So that's going to be my interest rate. I'm solving for the present value, so the next thing I need is the coupon payment. It's a 3.25% coupon bond, so that's going to translate into a coupon payment per year of $32.50. And I'm going to get half of that every six months. So every six months, I'm going to get a coupon payment of $16.25. And then when the bond matures, I'm going to get the par value returned to me of $1,000. So when I do all of that, I can now calculate the value of the bond. Again, give me just a second to go through that on my calculator. So I want 48 periods at 4%. 16.25 payment, 1,000 future value, calculate the present value, and that tells me that the bond itself is worth $884.98. Ignore the convertible feature and just buy the cash flows associated with the bond, and they're worth $884.98. So, we know that the bond price should be higher than this conversion value. We know it should be higher than this pure bond value. And it is. It's trading for $1,670. So, so far, everything makes sense. Next up, we want to calculate the conversion premium. The conversion premium tells us essentially how much is the extra we're paying beyond if it expired now, for that right to convert. Because remember, with a convertible bond, you can convert the share or the bond to underlying shares, but you don't have to. So if I decide not to, I can hold on to the stock or hold on to the bond and collect the coupon payments. If I do decide to convert, that's my choice. So it's like a call option built into the bond. So what is the conversion premium? This is kind of equivalent to the speculative premium associated with call options. So the conversion premium says, what is the market value of the bond? And that is $1,670 minus the conversion value, $1,507.50, and divide that by the conversion value of $1,507.50. So when I do that, I get a value of 10.78%. And that gives me an idea of how much extra I'm paying for that call option speculative premium built into my bond price. Next, what if the stock price drops? What if this company runs into problems? It's still able to pay its bond payment, but the investors decide they're probably not going to be able to convert it. So that's the downside risk. How far can the, the bond fall? What percentage loss can I take? And that is equal to the market value of the bond. Again, 1600 and 70 minus the pure bond value, which was $884.98, divided by the value of the bond. And by value of bond here, I mean what is its current market price? So that's the 1,670. So now I do that calculation, 1,670 minus 884.98 gives me $785.02, divide that by the 1,670, and that gives me a downside risk of 47.01%. So this gives me an idea of how much I could lose if investors decide that the convertible feature is no longer worthwhile. And the next question says, is this bond more likely to be equity sensitive interest rate sensitive or hybrid, kind of a combination of both. 
To answer that, let's look at the conversion premium and the downside risk. Because the bond is trading at such a premium to the pure bond value, let's say investors saw interest rates rise a little bit from 4% to 4.5%. All else equal, that's going to cause the pure bond value to drop a little bit, but it's probably not going to have an impact on the convertible bond price because right now investors are saying, you know what, it's worth a lot more shares of the stock. So they're focused more on this 1,507 than they are the 884.98. When we have a relatively low conversion premium and a relatively high downside risk, we have an equity sensitive convertible. It's gonna be driven more by changes in the underlying stock price. Now on the flip side, let's say this bond was trading for $887 and the current stock price was five dollars at that point investors are saying you know what the stock has to jump up so much in order for this to be worthwhile we're going to value it as a bond and in that case it's going to be driven more by changes in interest rates if interest rates go up bond prices go down and since investors at that point say the call option is so far out of the money we're not going to pay much for it then the market value of the bond is going to drop. So if the conversion premium is high and the downside risk is low, we have an interest rate sensitive convertible. Now, notice I use the terms high and low. Those are somewhat vague terms. What is a high conversion premium or what is a low conversion premium? There's not a clear cut line that says if the conversion premium is greater than 30%, that is uh, interest rate sensitive bond, or if the downside risk is greater than 25%, that is an, an, an equity sensitive bond. Instead, they're somewhat subjective, and if they're in between and it's not real clear, we probably have a hybrid convertible. It's a little bit sensitive to the underlying stock, it's a little bit sensitive to interest rates, it's gonna be affected by both factors. And what you're gonna find is that convertible bonds don't exist in three separate buckets. Instead, they exist in a continuum between equity sensitive and interest rate sensitive. And the middle of that continuum is hybrid. So some bonds are gonna be more equity sensitive and still have a little interest rate sensitivity. Some bonds are gonna be almost entirely interest rate sensitive maybe have a little bit of equity sensitivity and some are going to be kind of in between so think of it as a range or a spectrum more so than here is the bucket it falls into we're going to stop this video here and i'm going to do one more video that kind of breaks down the idea of the call option associated with convertible bonds in more detail thank you